So in this video, we're looking at the proof to De Moivre's theorem. We're going to use our uh, proof by induction in order to prove De Moivre's theorem. And proof by induction involves a three-step process. Let's just have a look at those three steps before we get into our proof. So the three steps are going to be, first of all, uh, showing that it's true for n is equal to 1. Now, it's telling us here that n must be a positive integer. So we're starting at 1, basically, and going to infinity. So that's the first thing we're going to show it's true by subbing 1 in for n. Our second step with our proof by induction is then going to be assuming that it's true. So we're going to assume true for some random number for n, and we're going to call that k. So it's some number k, which is an element of n, basically, a natural number, a positive integer. And our third step within our proof by induction is going to be then showing or proving for n equal to k plus 1. So k is our random number. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to then prove that it's true for that number plus 1. So the next number, basically. So let's have a look. So getting into our first step here. So step 1. And what we're going to do with our first step is, like we said up above, show true for n is equal to 1. And if I write down my De Moivre's theorem, it's cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of n. So I have um, cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of n. And I want that to equal cos n theta plus i sine n theta. Now remember that theta basically just stands for the angle that we're looking at here. And when I sub in 1, that's going to get me cos theta plus i sine theta all to the power of 1. And that is now equal to cos 1 theta. I'm subbing in 1 for n basically. plus i sine n theta, and n again is my power of 1. And that's basically it. When I multiply 1 by theta, I get cos theta plus i sine theta. So nothing too new there. That's basic enough because we're just subbing in the value of 1. So we've shown that it's true for n is equal to 1. Our next step now is that we're going to assume it's true for any number k. So step two is going to be assume true for n is equal to k. So let's have a look at this step now and see how this works out for us. So it's going to be the same. I'm going to go back up to the very start and take down my formula for De Marvre. So it's going to be cos theta plus i sine theta is equal to, to the power of n, I should say, cos n theta plus i sine n theta. I'm now putting it to the power of k. So on the left-hand side, that's going to become cos theta plus i sine theta all to the power of k is equal to cos k theta plus i sine k theta. So I'm assuming that that is true. That if I was to basically get the power of k, all I'm doing is I'm putting the k in front of the angle. So that's assumed true. Now we're going to come down onto step three and see what we have to do for that. So above our step three said to prove true for n is equal to k plus one. So let's just write down that step. So step three is going to be prove through for n is equal to k plus 1. So with this step, we're basically just practicing our multiplication, basically. That's what's going to be involved here in step 3. So what's happening here? So they want us to show that cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k plus 1 
is the same as cos k plus 1 theta plus i sine k plus 1 theta. That's what they want us to show is true. Now, what I've done there basically is I subbed in k plus 1 in for n into my right-hand side there. Now, when I'm solving proof by induction, when I'm looking at this now, I'm just going to focus in on the left-hand side of this equation. I know that this part here on the right-hand side has to be true. That's what I'm trying to show is true. So I'm only going to focus in on the left-hand side, this section here. And I'm going to manipulate it, I'm going to expand it, I'm going to multiply it, and hopefully I'll get that left-hand side of the equation. So let's go through it and see what we can do. So first thing I'm going to do here is, I'm going to refer you to page 21 in our log tables. So log tables, page 21. And we're going to use page 21 in our logs to deal with this power, our k plus 1. So the k plus 1 can be rewritten as cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k times cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 1. And that's equal to my right-hand side. Now, I'm not going to keep writing down this right-hand side as I go down. So I'm just putting my equals there to assume that it's equal to it. Now, you can then see that I have now found out uh, some interesting information from part step one and two above. This section here, cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of k, I'm going to take that from step two, what I assumed that is equal to. And I assumed that that is equal to cos k theta plus i sine k theta. So I'm just going to write that down. So this is the same as cos k theta plus i sine k theta. And cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 1, we found out from step 1 to be the same as cos theta plus i sine theta. Now we know that that was true. So basically what I've done there is I've dealt with the powers. Now I just have uh, two brackets stuck together, which basically means multiplication. So I'm just going to expand my brackets now. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to use some uh, basic algebraic multiplication. So what I'm going to do here is first term by second bracket. So my first term is cos k theta multiplied by my second bracket, which is cos theta plus i sine theta. And then my second term from the first bracket, which is i sine k theta multiplied by my second bracket, which is cos theta plus i sine theta. And I know, or I'm aiming to prove that that is equal to the right hand side. Multiplying in my brackets now. So what's this giving us? Cos k theta by cos theta is just the same as cos k theta, cos theta. I'm sticking them together. Now, remember that this is commutative. And what I mean by commutative is it doesn't matter if you write it as cos theta, cos k theta. It doesn't matter which one comes first. Plus cos k theta by i sine theta just becomes cos k theta i sine theta. I'm sticking them together. Now you can put them in brackets or a little dot between them to denote multiplication, uh, but no need. I'm then going to multiply in my second bracket. So it's i sine k theta by cos theta becomes plus i sine k theta cos theta plus. Now watch the second jump here. i sine k theta by i sine theta. Well, i by i is giving me i squared. And then sine k theta by sine theta becomes sine k theta times sine theta. And again, that is equal to the right hand side. I'm now going to focus in on this i squared. We know that i squared in complex numbers can be substituted with minus one. So I'm basically just going to rewrite this whole line again. And I'm just basically going to change this plus sign to a minus sign in order to deal with the i squared. So nothing's changing here up until this step and plus i squared now becomes minus one. 
sine k theta, sine theta equals the right hand side. Once again, we know that i squared is the same as minus one. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rearrange this uh, uh, linear equation that I have here. I'm just gonna reorder it. I'm gonna put it in order. Uh, we're used to looking at complex numbers like this, a plus bi. We have a real part and an imaginary part. So I'm gonna put the real parts first. Now my real parts are the ones without the i's. So I have cos k theta, cos theta, and at the end here I have minus 1k theta sine theta. So I'm going to put those together. So that's becoming cos k theta, cos theta, minus 1 sine t k theta. Now I don't need the 1, so I'm just going to leave it out. It's like saying I have one pen or I have a pen. I don't need to put in that 1. Okay, so that's the real parts dealt with. And then I'm going to look at the imaginary parts. The imaginary parts here are the ones with the eyes. So my first one there is a plus uh, cos k theta i sine theta. And it is plus the i sine k theta cos theta. And again, don't forget that this is all equal to that right hand side of the equals from up here. This is what we are now trying to prove. So let's keep going. Um, let's see now, is there anything I can do to tidy this up a little bit? So I'm now going to come to my log tables. So we're coming back from my log tables here now on page 14. And we are now looking at our rules of addition here. So what I want you to notice is uh, some similarities between what we have on the screen here and page 14 in our log table. So I'm gonna focus in on these two first of all, the cos k theta, cos theta, minus sine k theta, sine theta. Or in other words, the real part. And hopefully you can spot there that that is going to be looking at the cos um, a plus b. And if you look at cos a plus b on page 14, you will notice that that is the same as uh, cos a, cos b, minus sine a sine b and that's basically how we are now going to rewrite that so instead of calling it cos a plus b i'm going to call it cos a which is my first angle which is k theta plus b my second angle which is theta so i'm just going to highlight them there uh, this is my a and this is my b and i'm now coming over to my second section this part here Again, from page 14, hopefully you can see that that is similar to sine a plus b. So let's look at the similarities here. In the log tables, it's sine a plus b is equal to cos a uh, sine b plus sine a cos b. So I'm just gonna rewrite that as sine, instead of a and b, my first angle, my a is k theta, and my b is my second angle, which is theta. So that's gonna become k theta plus theta. Now again, I know that has an i associated with it. So if I factorize out that i, I'm gonna put it to the back here. So I'm basically factorizing out the i from that original uh, expression. Now what I'm doing is I'm focusing in on the addition sign here that's between them. So I need to add them together. So therefore, that's the same as cos k theta plus theta plus sine k theta plus theta times i. So I'm putting in that addition sign here. And now we are gonna look at it and see. We're still not there yet. Don't forget that the aim of the game here is to get this equal to the right-hand side. And if I just zoom out a little bit here, you can hopefully see that we're still not exactly there. It's still not what we want it to be. Again, this is what we want it to be. But what I can do here is I can see something that I can factorize out from the brackets. I can factorize out the theta. So if I factorize out the theta now from the brackets, it's going to get me uh, cos k plus one times theta. So just take a second there that you can realize that if I was to multiply in that theta, I will get back to k theta plus theta. And in the second bracket, I'm going to also factorize out the theta. So that becomes sine 
k plus 1 times theta i equals to the right hand side and if we scroll back up again uh, we are practically there uh, which we are and we just want to reorder it they put the i in front of the sign and like i said multiplication is commutative so that's the same as cos k plus 1 times theta plus i sine k plus 1 theta all i've done on that step is i've just moved that i over to the sign because it's all multiplication and that is now equal to my right hand side and i'm going to write it in for the last time uh, cos k plus 1 theta plus i sine k plus 1 theta and where i'm getting that from is from here that's coming from what i was asked to prove originally and that is basically us done so just as we finish i'm just going to write down my proof so therefore i have shown true for n is equal to 1 and n is equal to k which i assumed but i've also proved true for n is equal to k plus 1 and that is our proof to the Moivre's theorem using proof by induction uh, complete thank you for watching another tutorial video from Tullamats. make sure and subscribe